This is Chris Idaho Painter here on Paint Live TV. Today I've got a really cool video for you. I'm going to be testing out all these funky brushes that say they make cutting in a lot easier for you. This is my favorite brush for doing interior painting. It's a Premier Montauk. It's what I like to do cut-ins with in all my interior painting. But look, we've got the Stinger, we've got the Wedge, we've got the Elegance, and we've got the High Capacity. So I'm going to test these brushes, see if they're better than this brush, and I'll let you know. So stay tuned for this video. All right, now I'm going to start doing some cut-ins up here. I'm going to be testing using PPG Timeless, and this is going to be really challenging because this is a one coat paint. I've been painting with it. It's really watery and it really drips really bad. So it's been really annoying me, but it covers amazing. It says it's a one coat paint and I just about believe it, um, how well it's covered on these walls right here. It dries really fast, strong odor, um, I like the sheen to it. It's an eggshell sheen. I don't know. If you've used it, PPG Timeless, let us know down in the comments section below what you think. Some of you may have seen this thing on social media before. It has two different filament types on it. And then the one filament type, it comes out to a point, apparently, to make cutting in a lot easier. We're going to see if that helps you. This is in, um, it is Stinger, and it, the company is just Stinger. That's all they make is that brush. So we're gonna put that one to the test. I do have this brush right here. This is, you can see I've used it um, before. It's a high capacity brush from Purdy. Now we're gonna see if it makes cutting in a lot easier. I'll say the quality of the brush is not a very good quality brush. When I was painting with it, the bristles were coming out left and right on it. I was not happy with it, but hey, does it cut in better? Is it gonna make cutting in easier for you? We're gonna put it to the test. This little unusual thing, I've seen some guys using this, and I was wondering how in the world could you cut in with this? But I saw them use it, I get it, you take and you roll it in your fingers as you're painting, and I think it actually works. This one's from Richard, it's called The Elegance. Um, there's a company that makes some Stallmeister makes, probably the best one I've ever seen, an incredible paintbrush. Here, we're gonna put this one to the test. This is by Wiz, W-H-I-Z-Z. -Z. And Wiz makes the professional called the Wedge. And you can see that, it is wedge shaped. I'm really not understanding how that's gonna make me cut in better, but hey, we're gonna put it to the test. So I'm gonna get up here with my cut in bucket. I'm not gonna be using a four inch roller. I'm gonna put away my two inch knife. I've been preparing this wall for Venetian plaster. So I've been scraping off any um, peaks and valleys and spackling and painting. If you want to see that Venetian plaster video, um, stay tuned. And please don't forget, if you like our videos, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time I come out with a new video. It's free, simple, easy to do, but you have to hit the notification bell or subscribing doesn't do anything. So um, I guess I will start off with, uh, this one's probably gonna be a challenge. So I won't start with that one first. We'll just start off with um, a high cap capacity because this one's been used first. So I'm gonna get up here on my ladder and we're gonna begin painting and see if I can actually cut a line longer than normal. So the bristle length, the filament length is longer than the typical filament length on a brush. And so what I noticed is the brush started getting, um, it started getting soft too soon. And I like my brushes to be pretty stiff doing cut-ins. And so it just got too soft for me too quick, but we're gonna put it to the test with this really thin paint um, that will make being soft, okay, not a bad thing. So we're just gonna be testing right along already. I'm having a challenge keeping my bristles together, but my filaments together. And we're just gonna be painting along and I'm gonna work with this brush for a while and then I'll let you know down the road what I think. Here to me, um, cutting in, you need a stiffer brush. This brush is already way too soft for me. Now I'm gonna go do something really challenging and really unusual. And that's this little brush. I've been wanting to use this brush for a long time. There's a guy out there on social media, the Happy Painter. He uses this thing and I saw him paint an entire door like with one of these things. A door jam is incredible how fast he was painting with it. So 
Oh, they look pretty cool. But the whole idea behind this thing is you actually spin and rotate the brush. All right, my brush is starting to get more loaded up now. And you know what's interesting? It's very surprising how far you can actually go with this little brush doing a cut in. You can see, I, I mean, if you can see, I'm like just twirling it in my hand doing the cut in. That's kind of interesting. I would say it's, it's, it's definitely harder because you're rotating the brush. It's definitely harder to get for me, but hey, once again, let's give this thing a fair chance. It's harder to get a straight cut in because you're rotating it. I'm going to give up on this brush now. And I'm going to say um, this is not a cut in brush, and, um, but who knows? You might find some use for it. There it is. It's the Richard Elegance. Now we're going to move on to, I'm sure everybody wants to know, the Stinger, how well this thing is going to do. So the filaments on this thing, a lot softer. I think this is going to um, work pretty well you know, with this really thin paint. The filaments aren't flat, so I'm a little bit concerned you know, about this thing holding paint and it not dripping off. And I can already see it's coming off the ends it's not wanting to grab the paint and hold on to the paint. The one in Putin they made, the red filaments are now not as stiff as they used to be. So it's not roping the paint really bad. It has drawn a pretty good line. So it's drawn, um, the red filaments have the right amount of stiffness to draw a nice line. Red filaments are not softening up really fast like that. Um, that premier brush, I mean, once that thing got wet, that thing just softened up really, really fast. And makes, once the brush gets too soft, makes cutting in really difficult. I have to say that the, um, because the filaments aren't flagged, it's able to draw a really nice crisp line. Doesn't hold on to the paint, you know, um, very well. So I'm going to let's see what I got next. I have the Wiz Wedge. So we're going to take and put the Wiz Wedge to the test and see what this thing can actually do. Out of the bucket, it's a pretty stiff brush and it's really weird because it's really light. So this thing is extremely light, but it is only a two and a half inch brush. I like using a three inch brush for doing my cut-ins. So that actually cuts a pretty good line right there. Um, that stiffness, it's, it has a lot of balance to the filaments. So the one thing is, is this brush is really holding its shape really well compared to the rest, rest of the brushes I've tested so far. Um, the, the filaments are all staying together nicely as I'm cutting in. I would say this one so far cuts in easier than any of the other ones I cut in with. So far, this wedge, I'm definitely not a fan of two and a half inch brushes at all. Um, I'm not sure if this thing comes in three inches, but I'm able to confidently draw a line quicker with this brush. Now I gotta say, um, once you get all these brushes, I'm comparing them right now with just one paint, one paint that's flicking paint everywhere. Jeez Louise. All right, so I got done testing, and you know, out of all of them, you know, uh, some of them claim that you'll paint straighter and faster. I think the Wiz Wedge says it'll, you'll paint faster with it, so, or paint longer with it, so, um, I don't like, to me, any of the claims, I really don't see where I'm gonna be painting longer with any of the brushes. I don't see where I can paint faster than with any of the brushes compared to the Premier Montauk. Uh, when it came to all, comes to all the brushes that I tested, the Round Elegance, that one um, had the most crooked lines out of all of them. I would say the Wiz Wedge had the straightest lines 
out of all of them. I don't think it made me any better cutting in. Um, I think the most versatile brush is the Premier Montauk. I think the, the Wiz Wedge a little bit stiff. Um, and I don't think it holds paint any longer due because um, of the wedge, but that was a decent brush. It's built um, fairly well. It's a, a professional quality brush. Um, the Stinger brush, I don't think that the Stinger itself helped me cut in any better. It performs a lot better than it used to. The, the red portion of the Stinger used to be just way too stiff. Uh, the brush holds its shape up after you've got it up to where you are trying to actually draw your line. So it did perform a lot better. I think the, the wedge actually performed better than, um, than the, uh, the Stinger did. But out of all of them, the, uh, the worst brush was probably the, the Purdy High Capacity. It just gets way too soft, way too fast. The lines were just average at best, cutting in the lines with it. You're gonna say it was a used brush. The rest of these are new or fairly new. The Premier Montauk has only been used one time before that. Um, but you know, just as an all around brush, I'm gonna go with the Premier. If you're wanting a brush just to specifically help you with cut-ins, I think the Wiz might actually help you draw a line a little bit better than the rest of the brushes that I use here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. If you got any questions or comments about you know, these brushes that I've used, them, used today, leave them in the comment section below down there. I always answer and read my comments. And like we always say, hopefully we'll see you watching your eyes on my eyes on the next video.